in July in Florida following the special session. Ryan Elijah back with Mike Herodopoulos talking about the last minute compromises that were reached. Guys? Yeah, Bob, good to see you. There were some major compromises. Mike, thanks for sticking around. We didn't know how some of this was going to turn out. We knew the governor was not happy at all letting into the special session, but yet, like Visit Florida, he got the majority of his money. How did this all play out? It was a big win for the governor. He clearly used the power of the veto pen. He recognized that when you have a $3 billion surplus, you need to put more into public education. So he made a big push to increase it from $25 increase to $100 per student increase. And it worked out very well because legislators recognized July 1, the new budget takes effect. And if they don't make the governor happy, there's no budget. And they know who the fingers be pointed at. Yeah, they do for sure. And, and charter schools is another issue here. Education got more money at the end of the day, but some of that was siphoned off to charter schools. Explain, Mike, how this is going to change public schooling as we know it. Well, I think a lot of people are concerned about private schools. That voucher issue has been floating around for over two decades now in Florida. But a charter school is an idea that's really revolutionized the public school industry and the idea that you have fewer overhead, meaning you have less red tape, bureaucracy, whatever you might call it, so that more money goes actually into the classroom. There's been a lot of success around the country, especially here in Florida, where you have focused education, where maybe it's STEM education, math, science, technology, engineering, and math, you name it. Uh, and it really tries to say, we believe in the public element, but we want to have that flexibility for too long did not exist in public schools. Give a sense of, look, there were some bruised egos by the time this was all done, and there were also some vetoes for people that did not support the governor early on. Is that how things play out? And going forward, how is this going to have an effect? Well, it was a big deal. The, the governor really wanted to say, look, I'm the jobs governor. We've created $1.3 million um, new jobs together in Florida because of good policies attracting companies into our state. If you're not going to along with going with my program, I'm not going to help your program. It's a give and take. And a lot of these legislators took open pop shots at the governor. And so it took this kind of back and forth and real strenuous words from the governor to say, I'm going to veto your projects. It sends a message that he is not a lame duck governor. And in fact, he looks stronger than ever should he take on Bill Nelson for the U.S. Senate. Looking forward, how soon might we hear that announcement from him, do you think, if he's going to go with that? Well, I think he has such support right now within the Republican Party that he can probably wait as long as possible to do that. He is raising money through different groups and so forth. So he'll have the resources to take on a long-term incumbent like Bill Nelson. But I expect that to be an announcement to be made in the next few months. A lot of people are anticipating. In fact, this week, Donald Trump openly asked for him to run for U.S. Senate. Yeah, and he's got the name recognition. That's not oh, a no problem. And money won't be a problem, so it's just probably timing on him. I Mike, always appreciate the Thanks, insight. Ryan. Of course, we've got a lot longer discussion that you can find on the Fox 35 Facebook page. Let's get over to Jamie King with a